Hi everybody, Mr. Stewart here. I thought I would create a screencast that could help follow up and complete the examples that we were working on yesterday for the sign law. So very quickly, remember that the sign law is used in non-right triangles. And specifically, you can use it to find missing side lengths <clears throat> and also missing angles, as we'll see in a moment. Um, as I know that some of you have covered the sign law before, uh, a suggestion for you for the viewing uh, is you're welcome to take in as much of the video as you feel you need to. Okay, so self-regulate for yourselves. But um, if you're doing that, you might want to perhaps scroll ahead, check out the answers, take a quick look at how the solutions are laid out. And if you're doing okay, then move ahead to the next example. Okay, and if you have any questions, please bring them up in class and I'll help you out with that. Okay, so what we'll do is let's finish this off by finding the measure of side C. Uh, so yesterday, I believe we pointed out that we could use these three pieces of given information. So side B, angle B, angle C, and the unknown side C, okay, to set up an equation involving the sine law. So let's do that. So using angle B, so sine B is to B as sine C is to side C. Okay, so notice that I did not choose to use the top row of information. Okay, the reason being is that A ended up being 11. 6, roughly. Okay, so we actually had a rounding. There's some rounding error there. So if we use a rounded value here in that formula, we're going to introduce even more error in our calculation. So what we try to do is use the given information when we're solving. Okay, sometimes that's not possible, but if and when we do what we can. Okay, so let's keep going. Okay, let's substitute some values in. So we have the sine of 70 degrees is relative to 12 as a side length. And then the sine of 45 is to the unknown. In this case, it's side C. Okay. So in solving, there are different ways to manipulate the equation. But after you go through all of that process of manipulating it, you really end up doing what we call a cross multiplication. So C multiplied by sine 70 is equal to 12 multiplied by sine 45. Okay. So we want to solve for C. Okay. So let's undo multiplication by sine 70. So we'll divide that out on both sides. Okay. What that does is, in effect, some people use the term cancel, but the bottom value divides in the top value once. Okay, so we eliminate that. Um, it's kind of the same thing as saying, I'm going to go off over here on the margin of the right-hand side. <clears throat> if you have any fraction, Okay, that represents one whole. So let's say 2 over 2. What you're really doing is you're reducing that into lowest form, or 1 over 1. So when someone says we're canceling, okay, what we're doing is we're really reducing it into a lowest form. So this would be 1 over 1. Okay, so we're, all we're left with is C. So C is whatever this happens to be. So here's where the scientific calculator comes out. And let's calculate that. Let's see. Awesome. I just loaded that into the toolbar this morning, so I'm glad it's working. So for me, I have to do this indirectly. So I have to enter the angle first, hit sign, and then multiply by 12. Okay. So what that does is that deals with the numerator. Okay, now I'm going to divide that by what I have in the denominator. So 70 sine, 
and then I'll hit equals, and I get about 9.02. So notice that the values in the question for side length are to the nearest hole. So what we'll do is we'll just round that to the nearest whole number. So we see that therefore C is approximately 9. And I believe there are units involved, 9 centimeters. Okay. So last but not least, just go back and have a look. Make sure it makes sense in the question. So this is 9. And A was determined to be about 11.6. So, I mean, that too, that's about 12 centimeters. The triangle's almost isosceles, but not quite, given the difference in the angles that we have. So if we take a look, 9 is across from the short, sorry, the smallest angle. So it makes sense that that should be the shortest side. Okay. So as you're going through the videos, if you feel like the pacing is too fast, you have the power to pause and rewind and to, to rewatch if you need to. Okay, and that's the great thing about video is that uh, for instruction, you can't rewind your teacher in the class unless you're having conversation after conversation and question after question, and that's hard to do. So there's the power of video, so please use it to your advantage. For this one here, I thought I'll do one part of it because I want to keep the screencast down to, uh, if we can, maybe 10 minutes. We'll check our time here and see how we're doing. Uh, time is... 6.48, so okay. We might go a little beyond 10, but that should be okay. All right, so this time we're going to focus on finding angles. Okay, very similar process, but just a slight difference in how we calculate the answer. So let's list our given information. So we do not know this side. So question mark there. We do not know this. But we have side Q and angle Q. So that's 18 centimeters. This is 75 degrees. We have side R, which is 15, but we do not know this. Okay? So remember that with the sine law, or any situation where you have two ratios that are going to be equal to each other, that you need three pieces of info and find the other one. So I think this row is, uh, we're at, that's out. We're not going there. But we've got something to work with here. OK, so we could do something there. So let's set up the sine law for that. So we would have sine of angle Q is relative to Q. And then the sine of r, which is what we want, angle r, is relative to side r. Filling things in, sine 75 is relative to 18. The sine of r compares to 15. We'll do our cross multiplication. So 15 sine 75 is going to give you 18 sine r. Okay. Again, what we're looking for is the value of R. Okay, so this sine R, we're going to have to isolate it. So we can divide both sides by 18. And remember in the first example that this reduces to lowest form of 1 over 1. So we're left with sine R over here and this ratio over here. Okay. As you go through this stuff, please resist the urge to calculate the decimal. Okay. Wait until the end. Okay. Let the calculator do that for you in one shot. So last but not least, we need R. Okay. So in this case, to solve for R, we need to use the inverse sign. Okay. Use that for finding the angle. So I'm going to write for good communication, sine inverse of this ratio. And then I'm going to conduct my calculation. OK. 
Okay, so let's grab the calculator one more time. Out it goes. And uh, of course, if you need to pause, rewind, or pause just to try it on your own calculator, these are all good moves. So sine 75 multiplied by 15. So there's the numerator dealt with. Okay, so the value of the numerator is 14 decimal 4 divided by 18, which is the denominator, and we have 0 decimal 8, 0, etc. Okay, so that is not yet the value. Okay, we still need to apply the inverse. So let's apply this as a final step. So I'm using my second function, my shift, my inverse key. I'm going to invert that, and I get about 53.6 degrees. So 53.6 is approximately the value of R. Okay, which if we needed to round that up, about 54. Okay, so let's have a look here. Let's look back at the diagram. So angle R is 54. I'm just going to put that in here. I'll put that over here. Okay, so I think we'll close the video here. Go ahead and try the remaining on your own. And if you have questions, please let me know. Uh, you have everything you need now to go ahead and find angle P. Okay, because as you now know, um, we can go ahead and get that now because you do have the uh, 180 degree supplementary angle rule, right? Or rather, the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So you could use that to your advantage here and then continue practicing sine law. Okay.